Okay, so the first in our series of clinical videos, we're going to discuss adjustment of a bionator appliance. Um, when do we use a bionator? I like to use it not as an active appliance, but as a retention appliance, normally after phase one. Um, uh, Oliver here had a very deep 100% overbite, and we treated him with some uprarch development with some two by four mechanics, and we've opened the bite. Now to maintain that overbite as we wait for full eruption of permanent dentition, I've asked Oliver to wear a bionator uh, at home and at night time. The style of bionator is a bionator to open, which means it will have no acrylic in the posterior section so we can erupt the molars and it will have an anterior bite plate effect. Later in the non-clinical part of this video, I'll be showing you the other two bionators, which are the neutral bionator and the bionator to close. But basically we're talking about class two individuals that may be high angle, uh, may be low angle, may be neutral angle on their mandibular plane, and what keeps their jaw into class one as we're waiting between phase one uh, and phase two. And what we do is check it, see if there's any wear on it. Basically, if there's um, any breakages, or and make sure he's actually been wearing it. If it's brand new, it obviously hasn't been wearing it. That looks to be pretty good. All right, just the, in terms of design. This is with the clinical fit, yep. and then. So then, put the binder, and there we go. And put that in, open. Fix them beautifully. Chin up, buddy. That's good. And posture into it. So if we look at the design uh, of this bionator, labial bow, uh, which helps with our retention. Uh, one thing you've got to be careful of with the labial bow, uh, if it's too active, you'll start losing torque on your incisors. And you can see we don't want that sort of div two appearance occurring here. Uh, you can see in the buckle segments here, there's certainly um, space for the eruption of the teeth. And we can trim that acrylic. In this case, that acrylic is uh, colored white. Um, we can trim that acrylic in a mesio-distal direction that allows the molars to erupt and also erupt more into a class one position. Uh, you can see the incisal capping, uh, belts and braces approach. I have acrylic as well as ball class, much like um, the twin block appliance would be. The second thing, um, when you fit one of these bionators, you've got to make sure that the acrylic is in contact with the upper incisor. If there's a gap between the acrylic and the incisor, the incisors will over erupt, which is going to deepen the bite. Um, so now you can see for the lower, un, unimpeded, um, allowing to erupt. When you see the bionator to close, you'll realize that we have acrylic here because I want the incisors to erupt because it's an open bite. The neutral one will have acrylic here and acrylic there. Now this is the American style bionator in Europe. They use more the Baltus style. The Baltus style, this labial bow will bend back and around itself, giving what's called a vestibular shield. I like the vestibular shield because it prevents the cheek from rolling in when you're trying to erupt the teeth. So this is the American style binator to open. It will have incisal capping um, for the deep bite, labial bow and retention element, which you can see here, uh, I'll see, uh, when I take the appliance out, you'll see it a bit better, but you'll have a um, class, uh, Adams class, and you'll have a ball class, so that makes it very retentive. And in the lower, just in the terminal molar, uh, we have a C class, uh, much like my twin block design where we have retention of the lower in the same way we have a C class uh, at the back of, uh, of this appliance. So pop that up I'm going to take that appliance out there. So now you can see the appliance um, outside of the mouth um, and well, let's talk about a couple of things. Here our coffin spring allows us to get expansion if we still need it just by activating and I'll show you how to activate that in a moment. Um, you can see that we have a uh, bow 
uh, which we can change torque of our incisors. We have the labial bow, which gives us our retention. And if it's a div one and I want to detorque the incisors, I'll activate that loop. If we look then on the retention of the upper, you can see here your delta class. I much prefer delta to atoms. Why? The atom class, more chance of fracture. Delta class, the class is bent with the metallurgy of the wire, so there's less stress areas. Here's your ball class. Um, so the delta class, the ball class, the labial bow, all about retention. The inner um, bow, all about controlling your torque. Same with the outer bow and your coffin spring. Now if I turn the appliance around the other way, so now we're talking about the mandibular side, you can see it's pretty plain and simple. Here's your retention, which is your ball class, um, and there's your terminal C-class. And the terminal C-class really helps this appliance stay in at night. Some of the um, free floating bionaders, as I call them, I've had major problems with patients with retention, plants falling out at night, etc. This is a nice design that basically locks the mandible in the position I want as I can control eruption of the teeth. Now let's talk about controlling eruption of the teeth. Can everyone see the grooves here? This is what we adjust every visit. Basically, um, the appliance is put in the mouth with articulating paper. The patient bites into that and then we can see where the contact points are. And we judiciously trim those contact points such that we're encouraging the lower teeth to erupt vertically and mesially. The eruption of the teeth vertically and mesially um, allows us more class two correction, more vertical uh, uh, correction. Got anything else you'd want to add about that before we maybe go through adjustments? Um, that's great, Is right. How to activate? So activation, if we talk about expansion, this is a standard uh, universal plier, Jaraback, if we go, go back to our wire bending videos, I talk about this as being the um, light wire plier, uh, the half round, um, the um, universal. I know it uh, really as a Jaraback. So as we get this Jaraback plier and I press the omega loop, that can give me expansion. If I want to constrict the arch form, then again, I'm activating the loop on the other side. So three points of activation um, here, here, and here. As far as retention, the best way to tighten the class is to get the half round plier, place it just before the loop, and activate it like this. That gives very good retention. Ball class, same story. It can be right up at the ball, or more than likely it's going to be where that class enters the embrasure of the tooth or the contact point. And then again, we're just activating that um, to make it more retentive. Labial bow, if I want to um, detorque incisors, then I will grab my loop and press this way. If I have too much torque, in this situation we're losing torque it's becoming a little bit div two. I'm going to press here and open the um, loop and I'm going to activate the inner bow. And activation of the inner bow is a very simple task by pushing forward. Um, so in this situation, we will activate the inner bow, release the outer bow because we are detorquing the incisors. He's wearing this appliance so well that the upper incisors are becoming a little bit div two. Um, if it was the opposite, proclined incisors, I would release on here and activate um, on there. Um, so Con, some yeah. more activation yeah, tips? Yeah. Just the, to activate the omega loops, put your little bird beak into the omega loop. Okay, so we get the omega loop and we activate towards the undercut of the tooth, which will be gingival this way. So we go there into the omega loop Grip it, and we so roll it in, like so. And then on the distal, do the same, like so, and want to activate it this direction. Again, from side on view, you can see it's activating in the gingival direction, thereby embracing the undercut a little bit more firmly. C-clasps, you can see from this view, 
if we need to activate, we will just simply, like a denture, tighten this way. Or possibly even more gingival, so if it needs to engage the undercut but if it's gingival. Wall clasps, less is more. You don't want to move these too much. You want to get your little jerry back like so. And you only need very minimal movement here to actually get the retention to being a lot tighter. Otherwise, if it's too tight, it might not seat, the pines might not seat. And you so simply grab here and then in. Um, that's about it. The labour bow, I'll do it from the side on here, as Derek said. We activate like so. If I pull the labial bow more lingual, um, also just be careful of the deep torque sizes, in which case I reverse the bed by pulling back this way. You can see that there. So we you know, pinch once and draw back this way. So then when it goes in, open ready. You know, get patient's posture into it. And make sure we look at the incisor ledges and make sure they're all seated correctly into the acrylic. And now, if we want to erupt teeth, Derek, we want to deepen the bite. We trim trim the acrylic pads on the uppers, and the posterior is already just there to close. Lock like that. Um. I'm just going to show the original malocclusion to yeah. where he is now. Can I just Enjoy open nice and wide there for me? Good. Can I open really wide? Bite together again, close together, good. Bite on your bite normally, normal bite, yeah. So if you, um, if you have a look at uh, his bite at the moment, when he started, and I'll show you his original photos and his original uh, models, he had a 100% overbite complete to the palate. Um, so this is a great way while the child's still growing to open the bite. Um, before we consider going to phase two, you can see he's got peg lateral uh, incisors. And so normally what I like to do is work in conjunction with um, my prosthodontist and periodontist, maybe doing a gingivectomy, um, bonding off that lateral with composite uh, before we uh, actually bracket the case. Prescription I'd use in phase two, high torque um, upper, low torque lower, light class two elastics from the go-get. The elastics are really going to be to erupt the posterior dentition. So once we've expressed torque um, and then erupt the posterior teeth, I'd change that to more of a box pattern elastic in the uh, uh, buckle uh, segment. But um, uh, effectively, uh, this is phase one, uh, bite opening. Uh, waiting now for full eruption of the second molars to consider uh, a phase two uh, uh, treatment uh, uh, plan. This is one method of taking uh, the bite. Uh, this is what we used in uh, Oliver's case. Uh, it's a uh, projet, it's the blue projet. Blue projet gives you the right amount of opening for a deep bite. We use the yellow projet if we're doing a open bite and I'll talk about binators to close in a moment. And you can see the main thing is I don't want any wax in that contact point because if wax falls into that contact point we have the problem of um, uh, having uh, artificial positioning on the articulator which is not going to be an accurate fit uh, then in the mouth. Now if we look at the original malocclusion and um, again uh, we can see where Oliver started 100% overbite uh, mixed dentition, uh, very, very deep. In the past, this would be left to treat in permanent dentition. In permanent dentition, very hard bite opening mechanics because of the brachyfacial uh, jaw pattern. Uh, what we've done effectively in phase one is open the bite and uh, makes it much easier for us to control our mechanics. Little tip for you here, when I present a case to uh, patients and their parents, they always want to know how many baby teeth are left. Just a tip, we fluoro the baby teeth on the model. It makes it very easy for the patients then to, and the parents to understand um, uh, what is happening. Uh, and in his case, we started him in a mixed dentition, uh, what the Americans were called two by four, 
two molars, four incisors. You can see how small his uh, incisors were there um, before full eruption. And um, you can see the uh, very deep bite. And if I look, uh, can you just turn your head that way for us, Oliver? Thank you. You can see the classical brachyfacial jaw pattern. These are the patients who are going to be the bruxes, who are going to have the mandibular tori. Uh, and your biggest problem is, um, in an adult, trying to extrude teeth with that sort of musculature is prone to relapse. Because as you're erupting the posterior teeth, his muscles are intruding. So that's why you want to treat the child during growth. Uh, Oliver's had a big growth spurt during his first phase treatment. That certainly helped us. It's uh, corrected the class two and it's opened the vertical dimension um, uh, off the bite. So I thought um, we might ask uh, Oliver as the patient what his experience has been off the bionator and the two by four mechanics. Um, so Oliver, what do you think about wearing this plate? Uh, it's easy to wear and well, it stays in at night and it's pretty comfortable. Uh -huh. yeah. And how often do you wear it? Every night, most of the time, yeah. Good, good man. Ideally, in end of phase one, what I'd like the patient to do is to put the appliance in as soon as they get home from school. They then take it out when they're eating, brush their teeth back in their mouth till the following morning. So that protocol, which is about 12 hours a day, really helps retain the changes we did in phase one. Um, Oliver, what about when you had those four braces on the top and bottom teeth? How did you go with those? Uh, yeah, it was okay. I think uh, you had a really deep bite um, and we had to put some of that uh, putty on your back teeth, remember? So yeah. that way when you bit down, you wouldn't break off your lower uh, braces. Yeah. yeah right. Um, so anything else you want to say about your appliance? Mm, no. All right, so I want, you, I want you to keep wearing it like you have been, doing a good job. And then I'll see you again probably in six months' time. Mm -hmm. But between now and then, if it's not fitting properly, it's falling out at night, you come in early and I can adjust it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thanks very much for coming in today.